Thank you, Secretary General. Thank you, Ambassador Danone, and all distinguished guests for allowing me to be here today and to share with you an experience that I wish never happens again to anyone. Just 60 days ago, we were celebrating the holiday of Passover, the holiday that we celebrated for 3,300 years of our exodus from 200 years of slavery and torture. It was the last day of Passover, a day that we dedicated not to the past, but rather to the future. The last day of Passover, the eighth day, is a day that we memorialize those from the past. I came to synagogue that morning all excited after celebrating seven days of joy and happiness in our United States of America, together with millions of Jews throughout the world. The last day of Passover, we read a prophet, a prophecy from Isaiah 10, where it talks about a perfect world, the world when Mashiach will come, when the Messiah will arrive. And it talks about the world when the wolf and the lamb will dwell together, a world that everyone would love each other, that the knowledge of God will be everywhere. I was getting ready to read that. I was excited to read that because the world needs to be a better world. We need to welcome a new era that we have been praying for for 2,000 years. And this was my moment that I'm going to read about it and try to actualize it. I find myself in the lobby of our synagogue. I meet Lori Kay of blessed memory. Her daughter Hannah is with us. Her sister, Randy, is with us right now. Lori greets me so beautifully. Says, Rabbi, when is the memorial service happening? I said, in 15 minutes. I turn around to go wash my hands to get ready for this very special prayer. When suddenly I hear a thundering sound of gunshots. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what it was. I turned around and I see in the lobby of our synagogue, a house of worship, a home where children come to celebrate, to sing, to play, a house of hope, a house that's supposed to be a house of safety, that cuddles you with God. You're walking into God's home, our Chabad center. And I turn around and I see this terrorist, this young 19-year-old standing in the lobby holding an AR-15. And I'm looking down the barrel of it. Behind me are children who are playing and enjoying the holiday, including my own grandkids. I have a fraction of a second to decide what do I do? Do I collapse and hide? The gun is pointing at me. Or do I think about the children? It wasn't a doubt in my mind what I'm to do. We need to save the children. I turn around to go grab the children and the terrorist takes aim at me and shoots at me and blows off my fingers. With, notwithstanding that, I grab the children to safety. As soon as the children are away, my four and a half year old granddaughter Musia looks at me and cries, says, Zaidi, Grandpa, why are you bleeding? I'll never forget the look on that face. Really, in 2019, a four and a half year old granddaughter has to see her grandfather bleeding from gunshot wounds? I run back to the line of fire, not knowing what's going on, what happened. And I discover that the gunman has miraculously been thrown out, pushed out of our synagogue by very brave members of our congregation. I look around, I find my congregation is huddled on the street. 
and I see the look of terror, of horror on their faces, what they have just experienced. I grab a chair and I stand up on the chair and all I can tell them is, we just read in the Passover, just days ago at the Seder, we said in every generation they rise up against us. And here we are again, they rose up against us. They came into our synagogue with a gun, with a rifle to kill. He had enough ammunition to wipe us all out. But I told them the second part of the verse, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Miyodim, God will spare us. And that is exactly what happened, God has spared us. And I told my congregation, do not let this moment define us. It will not consume us, but rather, Am Yisrael Chai, the nation of Israel lives, will always live on. What happened afterwards, my congregation did not go home. They rather regrouped, and within a couple hours, the prayer services continued. They gathered at the neighbor's house, and they continued the prayer service of that day to show that nothing, nothing will ever stop us. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Lori Kay did not deserve to die because she came to synagogue to pray. She was a wonderful, kind, angelic person. The reason why she died was because she was a Jew. The reason why I got shot, because I was a Jew. When you look at me now, you see a man with a black hat and a black jacket. The first thing that comes to your mind is that I look like a Jew. But you know what? I look just like you. I am a human being. We are all human beings created by God Almighty. We are all created by God for a reason. The day each one of you were born, God said the world can no longer exist without you. Each one of us need to look at each other as a human being, not by the color of our skin, not by our language, not by our religion, but we are all children of God. And this is what we need to begin realizing and appreciating. Anti-Semitism is not a Jewish problem. This is a problem for the world. And we need to recognize that, that anti-Semitism has been the longest, the most, the most harmful, not just for the Jewish people, but for the world. Stalin killed Jews, but he killed 150 million of his own. Hitler killed Jews and killed how many millions of their own. The jihadists first killed Jews and they killed everyone else. Anti-Semitism, we need to realize, is not just about the Jewish people, it's about the future of civilization. Do we want to live in a world of blood and tears, or do we want to live in a world with love and beauty? So the question is, what is the solution? What is the answer to that? So I want to share with you that I recently uncovered a speech that my dear Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, teaches to millions, including myself. He penned this speech 32 years ago to be read right here at the United Nations. But it didn't come to fruition. I have the great opportunity, and I'm very humbled, to share with you some of the words that my dear Rebbe wrote 32 years ago that is so relevant today. And the Rebbe writes about the power of the United Nations. All of you here have been given by God an opportunity to make a difference in the world. And the Rebbe taught us something very poignant, that indeed, when the world was repopulated after the flood with Noah, God gave seven laws called the Noahite laws. This is the bedrock of any civilization that were to exist. And the Rebbe pleaded, if only the United Nations will go back to the basics and empower their nation to adopt the seven Noahite laws, then this world would be a very different world and perhaps we, we wouldn't have lost 150 million lives that we have lost in the last 200 years. So I ask every nation that's here, everyone that's listening, consider taking the seven Noahite laws back to the basics and apply it 
to real daily life, and we will see a world difference. Our children are our future. We need to truly reevaluate how we are educating our children. Children need to have a moment of reflection every single day, or perhaps a moment of silence, to think that they have been created by God, that they are an image of God, and that they need to realize that there is a supreme being, and that truly uh, there's an eye that sees and ear that hears everything that they do. If we give children that opportunity, then perhaps these children will grow up with more meaning and more responsibility. Today's session is to talk about how do we deal with anti-Semitism in the digital age. My Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, has taught us that modern technology is a gift from God when it's harnessed to do good and to bring light. This is the duty of all good people that who can use modern technology for positivity. To remind ourselves and others that we are all inherently good. God created all children as they are born as good and great people. And everyone has that within them. The best way to fight the darkness of hate is to do more good acts of love and kindness. We must become proactive ambassadors of light. If Jews are attacked for being Jewish, then we must do more Jewish ever so proudly. We must never react with defeatism, which simply rewards evil and feeds the darkness. Our fear of evil only feeds and animates it. Instead, we must remain strong and practice our faith even more openly and more brazenly and become even brighter agents of light. And that is exactly what a 14-year-old child did shortly after the attack at our synagogue in Chicago when this 14-year-old who goes to public school was graduating, as he walked up to get his diploma, he took out his kippah and put it on his head without shame or fear because that is how we react to darkness. The subsequent images of Mitchell proudly wearing the kippah was flashed around the world in social media and on the internet. This is how we react. This is a message of pride, fight, uh, pride, light, and strength. This is how we are going to continue to act, whether it's through social media or whether it's through the internet. We need to be able to have the opportunity to truly flood the internet with tremendous amount of love, words of kindness, words of compassion, words of inspiration. It is true that new technologies and media can be used to spread darkness and hatred. But if hate can leap across continents through it, so can love and light that will defeat it. If darkness can, sped, can be spread through words and ideas, so can light that will outshine it. Ladies and gentlemen, let us imagine for a moment what if everyone in the world started their day thinking about doing something positive for someone else, contemplating about the sanctity of life, about life's purpose, and how to help make the world a more loving and peaceful place. What if that person was you? What if that was your neighbor, your boss, your coworker, and the whole world? If we can imagine it, we can do it. Though we realize we are living in different nations, we represent different parts of the world, but God put you there for a reason. And that is not to fight darkness with darkness, but with a great big light. Right after our attack, I decided that I'm going to use the same technology that inspired the terrorist from 
He was inspired by New Zealand and Pittsburgh through the internet. I am going to launch a bright light, a great light, that we're going to conquer the world with a billion good deeds, an initiative that we're going to flood the internet, we're going to flood the cell, social media to excite people to start doing good deeds. As the Rebbe taught us, through random acts of goodness and kindness, you create light in the world. We may be standing here at the United Nations. There may be a lot of darkness that has gone through this room. But we're going to bring light, just like we are bringing light right now. And one of the ways of bringing light is through actions, not just words, but to do and to make things happen. And on your behalf, I'm going to begin an action. I'm going to give charity right here in the United Nations in this charity box that everyone should have a charity in their home, that every morning think about helping others. So on behalf of all the nations here, I am going to begin an act of kindness, an act of goodness by giving charity, and this will certainly bring blessing to the whole world. Whenever darkness throws its shadow, we must respond with a tremendous light that comes from actions of kindness and express our shared, that we all express in our shared humanity. May we merit, just like it's engraved on the walls of the United Nations, that we should beat the swords into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not take up sword against nation they shall never again know of any war. Let's turn the swords of social media, the hate and the ugly divisiveness, the intolerance for others, into an overflown conduit spreading light, love and peace throughout the entire world. And I ask everyone here to remember the day that a rabbi stood here showing you what has happened to me, what has happened to Lori Kay, and remember the symbol of losing a finger is not to use the finger to point at each other what we are doing wrong. Use the finger to point at each other what is good about us. My father, blessed memory, taught me a song when I was a little child. And he spoke about God is here, God is there, God is truly everywhere, up, up down, down, right, left, and all around. And he used his index finger to do that. I taught my children with my index finger. Now that my index finger, I give it to every single one of you, that when you are out there and you hear a word of anti-Semitism, an innuendo, an underhand joke, that's where it begins. Use this finger and point to God and say, this is not how God intended this world to be. God intended this world not to be a jungle, not to be a wasteland, but this world is a world that we can truly turn in to be an amazing world. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this moment. We have a chance to watch civilization turn in to peace or the opposite. Do not forget this moment. Never again shall we ever have to live through such tyranny, such terrorism. On the contrary, let this day be the defining day that we turn a page in history right here in the United Nations, that we're no longer going to look at a world that's going to suffer from blood and tears, but a world that's going to be filled with love and beauty until greater times with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days. Amen. Thank you very much.